about file updates. If, if you to uh, um, work file updates successfully or if you've tried it, good or bad. Yeah, Wes, this is Armin. Hey, Armin, go ahead, buddy. Good to have you on the call today. So um, <clears throat> I just pull about 10 files at a time. It goes through the files before I get on the call. And then when I get the, the family on the call, I uh, introduce myself, ask them how they're doing through this lockdown and let them know I'm, I went through their file, let them know that they have everything uh, taken care of, except for probably at the time that they did this, we didn't have the away from home assurance. I explain what it is, and I let them know that I can take care of that right now over the phone with a credit card, and I've been pretty successful with it. How many of those, the plans of those of, those of you sold by, by doing that? Um, three or four okay which is you know it's pretty good actually that's great um, Absolutely. you bet i i've had i've had some people hang up on me i've had some people call me ambulance chases but you know it's just one call after another yeah that's right you got that thick skin man so so that's a great little system that armin just sh shared about just pulling a few files every day these are people that have already bought pre-arrangements I'm going, to kind of, I'm going to enhance that uh, conversation just a little bit from what he's doing, but that's that's an excellent example. Um, also, some funeral homes, uh, well, we have a couple of different situations. One is in some cases we have uh, clients who have cemeteries and families just own cemetery property. They haven't got their funeral plans yet. Uh, we have others, but as you're going through those files, sometimes everything is not taken care of. And what I mean by that is they may have bought a partial plan or they may have uh, also left off their supplemental funds or cash advance items. And so you have an opportunity to talk with them about that just a little bit as well. So the two types of files that we're gonna uh, primarily focus on today are um, families who have already made pre-arrangements. So these are actually pretty easy calls to make. You're just calling and following up with people. I'm gonna give you a really great, actually, um, when I was going through and, and just updating the script based upon the current circumstances, this is a file update script that I really similar to the one that I used back when I was making a lot of calls. And, uh, and it worked really well, um, especially for families who just had cemetery property and they needed to finish up their funeral plans. So um, it, it worked great. It also, there's a lot of people as I was going through files, I found out for whatever reason, maybe they had a limited budget. They just bought funeral services. They didn't buy any merchandise. Um, so I was able to do a file review with them to take care of the rest of their arrangements. Sometimes I found out, I found a file that just had a casket on it and nothing else. So that gave me an opportunity to ask some questions and to figure out what, what was going on there. And, and the whole idea here, you guys, and the way this is, reason this is such a cool way to approach families is, is you're uh, coming from a place of service that, you know, I, we don't want you to have any surprises right so um so the more often that we can do this and we can reach out to our families who have plans with this and in some cases you're going through the files some of the funeral homes have got what they call an unfunded file so an unfunded an unfunded file you might have these personally or you might have them in your firm if you're not sure whether or not you have these files um go to your funeral home owner and ask if they exist because a lot of times they say, oh yeah, we do have a, a small filing cabinet of people that did we did price quotes on or did vital statistics forms on, but they never actually funded their plan. So um, there should be a method at your funeral home for, for um, putting those on file. Your funeral home owners would really like that. And it's a really good service that you can offer to your families as well, that even if they don't fund, at the very minimum, you're gonna start, start a file for them at the funeral home. So at least, some of the, although they're not paid for, the decisions that they made are at least on file. So it's it's a really good approach to kind of take the pressure off of someone who's wanting to get together. You know, that you can say at the very minimum, we're gonna have all of your arrangements, your decisions on file while they're not paid for. Some still gonna have to take care of them. At least um, we've got a good start with your vital statistics and having your, your, your decisions on file. So um, create an unfunded file if you don't have one. Check with your funeral home owner and just ask them if they have any unfunded files that you can work. Uh, they're available. So um, 
This is a really simple phone script and an easy one to make right now because you're you're just calling to check in with people once again. So uh, I'll follow the script and do some commentary as I'm going along here. But again, this is a really great method for reaching out to families. So um, go through the files, pull out some files each day. Maybe you have some unfunded. Maybe you've got some that are funded. You can look at files where you can see that there are some opportunities to fill in the blanks. Um, some of those opportunities just might be supplemental funds. But if you think about that just for a minute, the, you can supplemental funds add up really quickly. When you look at obituary notice, when you look at death certificates, um, cemetery fees, so opening and closing of the grave, maybe they haven't bought their headstone. You could set some money aside for the headstone. In some areas, um, Geographically, there's sales tax that has to be paid on merchandise that can't be paid until the time of need. Um, there are items that, that families are, quite frankly, the kids will come in and their parents will have told them everything is taken care of. And then they have this bill for, for $2,000 or $2,500 that they didn't expect. And sometimes even those who prearranged because the counselor wasn't really thorough with them, they only covered the guaranteed items and they didn't cover the non-guaranteed items. So we have a wonderful opportunity to just to explain these things to a family. So, hi, am I speaking with John? Hi, John, this is West with Larkin Mortuary. How are you doing today? I'm sure you're busy, so I'll be re brief. The reason for my call today is it's either going to be that you have made funeral and cremate, cre or you've made your funeral arrangements with us. Is that correct? So we're just simply calling them. You've made your plans. You have some plans on file with our firm. Is that correct? And obviously they're going to say, yes, that's correct. If they, you might also say, you know, it looks like a while ago you met with a representative here and you started a file with us. Is that correct? So you're just kind of just doing one of those really, this is a simple sales thing, but you're actually ask, asking a question that you don't already know the answer to, right? Is that correct? Well, because we're unable to meet with our families in person right now, we're just simply going through our files and we're updating them. We actually recommend updating your records about once a year. When is the last time you had your, your personal up information updated with us? So that's what they're gonna say most of the time. I don't think I've ever updated my personal information. I haven't talked to somebody since I bought that plan eight years ago, or I haven't talked to someone in, in, in a long time. So again, we're, we're kind of asking some questions here. It keeps them engaged because we're unable to meet with our families in person right now. We're just going through our files and updating them. We actually recommend uh, doing this about once a year. When's the last time you've updated your personal information with us? And then we just, that's an open-ended question. We just be quiet and they're probably going to tell us a long time ago. Then I would always say, you know, I'm really sorry that we haven't called sooner. Um, I apologize. Um, but we can actually take care of this and go over everything right now and update your information. Um, or I could schedule a time in the next few days when you have 15 or 20 minutes, what would work best for you? So we can either people at home and they're not, they're not going anywhere. So uh, it's a really good time to do that. Normally, however, going back to the old days, I would just simply say, um, you know, we can take care of this at our office or in your home. It only takes about 15 or 20 minutes what would work best for you? So as I was doing file reviews, I would say, I would ask them when's the last time they had their personal information up. They would often say it's, you know, I can't remember the last time we've talked to somebody there. I'd apologize. I'm really sorry that we haven't called sooner. Uh, we can either take care of this right here at the office or we have to uh, in the next few days. What would work best for you? So in this case, though, we can do it right on the phone. That's what we're trying to do. We can't meet with people in person, so we've tweaked the script just a little bit to make it easy for them to do it. So we can do it right now, or we can schedule a time when they have 15 or 20 minutes. What would work best for you? Again, we're doing an alternate choice, and we're asking them what would work best for them. Okay? Any questions about that so far? This is an easy call, guys. It really is. Okay? If they have existing pre-arrangements, what we're going to want to do, you guys should be familiar with the form that's the personal wishes profile and vital statistics form. This is a form that we gather during our, uh, during our events where we're gathering personal information. So this is going to be their, their name, their ad, vital statistics. This is information that the funeral director needs in order to get started on the death certificate. So you'll find that a lot of files, pre-need files, don't have this information. So you can simply explain with it. I'm gonna start by just gathering just your basic information, making sure I have an updated address. 
that I have updated phone numbers, updated email address, and then also we'll just get basic information, vital statistic information, so that the funeral director can actually get started on getting the death to get put together for even arrives for the arrangement conference. So let's start there. Let's gather some information. Okay. So yeah, go ahead, Aaron, please. You may just want to mute everyone. There's a few people on the phone. I don't know if you guys are hearing that, but it's just just while you're going through this. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, thanks. I can click the right button here. Muted. All right, let's try that. Okay, guys. So then we're going to um, we're going to gather that information, and again, the best form to do that with is the personal wishes profile and vital statistics form. Okay. The other thing that's really great um, that you can add to this is that um, you say, and you could say, you know, I've also noticed that we don't have any local emergency contacts on file. This is something that's really important in the event we can't get a hold of you um, or if something were to happen uh, uh, that we have some local emergency contacts. So um, who should we add to your file as emergency contacts? This is a really common thing that people are asked for this. You guys give emergency contacts all the time. Anytime you go somewhere, you give an emergency contact. When you go to the hospital, you give an emergency contact. Um, it's not uncommon to ask for emergency contacts. But obviously the dual purpose for an emergency contact is also a referral that we can then reach out to that family and we can offer them the personal wishes organizer and the other things that we provide. So get those local emergency contacts and make sure that uh, you can then ask for permission to reach out to them and let them know that they're emergency contacts and offer them the same information. So um, getting that information is kind of dual, dual purposed. Um, and quite honestly, that's those have come in really handy um, when we've needed to work through a file, um, you know, with sometimes with cemeteries, there's a conflict with some cemetery property, your families want to maybe move, shift some spaces around. We go to dial a phone number on the file and that phone number is disconnected, but they've got a local emergency contacts on file and those people are available. So those emergency contacts, when you ask for them, it's very simple. You don't have to do a lot of explaining just to have those. So we're getting their biostatistics, their local emergency contacts. And then we're gonna just go, you guys, um, you're gonna go, you've got the file in front of you. You're just gonna go line by line and you're just gonna thoroughly explain their funeral services and merchandise to them. And kind of while you're going through it, asking some questions, does that sound right? Does that sound correct? Um, and you're going to go through things in detail. This is what we have on file for you at the funeral home. Okay, so we're just going through it. We're reviewing it. We're uh, reassuring them. It's the, you know, if it's been paid for, what's been paid for. Add some value conversation to that, that you've, you know, man, you know, you bought this eight years ago and the prices have gone up quite a bit. So you did a really good job. Um, the thing that I always like to ask too is, is, would you mind if I asked why you decided to take care of things ahead of time? Looks like I missed a word there. Would you mind if I asked why you decided to take care of things ahead of time? This kind of brings it back to that emotional state of why they took care of this. So, you know, I just didn't really want my kids to have to worry about it. And I wanted to make sure it was all paid for. They're going to tell you why they took care of things ahead of time. Okay. And that's going to lead us into the next part of our conversation really gracefully, which is, you know, John, you've done a wonderful thing for your family. Removing this burden from them is just a very thoughtful and caring act on your part. So great job. You know, most families that I speak with want to make sure that everything is taken care of. And I actually noticed that you have not you have not set any money aside for items like flowers, death certificates, obituary notice, and cemetery expenses. So with your permission, I'm happy to put a quote together for the items you're missing so that your family does not have any surprises when you pass away. Does that sound good? So I'm basically kind of just saying I'm going to do this, but in a little bit nicer way with with your permission is a really great, great way to introduce something that makes it seem like you're doing it with their permission, but it's also kind of assertive. So with your permission, I'm going to go ahead and put a quote together for the items that you're missing so that your family doesn't have any surprises when you pass away. Does that sound good? I'm just being kind of assumptive there and I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and most of the time they're going to be, yeah, that, that sounds good. I'm not asking them to buy anything. I'm just going to put together some information. So uh, we now have, and I'll resend this when I send out the script today. I got a couple of edits. It looks like words that I missed here, but I'm going to resend out the supplemental funds, the fillable supplemental funds worksheet. This is something that we introduced to you guys a couple of weeks ago with the new email slide decks. That's a fillable form. 
So now we can, uh, with the family, I can kind of go through and, and you know, you're going to need a little bit of money for obituary and death certificates and, and cemetery expenses. And then also, as Armin said, we don't want to forget to include the away from home assurance. So I'm going to, um, you can do this a couple of different ways if you'd like. Um, you know, let, let, let me put this information together and I'll call you back. Um, if you're not ready to do it right, right then and there, um, but then just kind of explain, you know, this is the money set aside. And then also, um, when you did your pre-arrangements, we didn't have uh, away from home assurance. And this, then you explain it to them, this protects you that if you uh, pass away more than 100 miles away from home, that everything is going to be taken care of with one phone call. You don't have to worry about all those additional expenses and all the details to try to get your body back. Um, and that's the other thing that your file is missing. So if, if, if you can imagine for just a minute, even if you made 10 phone calls and only one of them resulted in someone wanting to do their supplemental funds, that could easily be a two or $3,000 add-on sell for you to an existing insurance policy, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind that what we're trying to do is this, it's a service that we're, we don't want a family to have any surprises when the death occurs. I can promise you, and if you've ever sat through an at need arrangement, that it is always surprising when a, when children or even a spouse sometimes who was right there when they did the prearrangement comes in thinking everything is taken care of and there's still these third party expenses that have to be paid for. They still need flowers. Sometimes they still need their printing materials. So be paid close attention to that. Um, they might have services in a casket, but the agent who sold them before might have left off a register book, programs, thank you cards, uh, a, a, a picture DVD, right? These are maybe all things that weren't available eight or 10 years ago, but now you can discuss with the family. So your job is to basically help them fill in the blanks so there aren't any surprises. At the very minimum, they're going to get this sheet saying, you know, well, even if they don't decide to do it, at least they're aware that these things have not been paid for. So there might be some communication with the family to that regard. So um, you're going to do the supplemental funds worksheet. Um, and then part of the script here, we've now reviewed this with them. You know, you can easily add this to your existing funeral plan to just ensure your family doesn't have to worry about any of these additional expenses. And this is that alternate choice closing question right here. Takes that professional courage. Is this something you would want to take care of with a single payment or would you be more comfortable to pay monthly? So we're going through these arrangements, you know, it looks like probably to go ahead and pretty much complete your plan and take care of these additional expenses would probably be about $2,500. Uh, is this something that you would want to take care of with a single payment or would it be more comfortable for you to pay, pay on a monthly basis? So we're just asking a closing question. So, you know, you'll probably be more comfortable to pay on a monthly basis. That's great. Well, we can take care of this all over the phone and online. What email address should I use to get started? Can you guys kind of see the method of my madness here? Most, you could go to your funeral home files right now and find a good majority of funeral plans have left off supplemental funds. But the very minimum, you're letting the family know You've got most things taken care of, but I don't want you to have any surprises. It's my job to make sure you have all the information. These are the things that are still gonna need to be paid for when you pass away. And then you can just simply, you go over that with them, they understand it. You can easily add this to your existing funeral plan to assure your family doesn't have anything to worry, to have to worry about these additional expenses. Is this something that you would want to take care of with a single payment or would it be more comfortable for you to pay monthly? We can take care of this all over the phone or online. What email address should I use to get started? Okay. Any feedback on that at all? Feel free, feel free to unmute yourselves. Do you have any questions or comments or thoughts on what I've shared with you so far? Unmuted. West, I'd like to share something. I, I was sharing this story yesterday to an agent. I can't remember who I was talking to. There was a lady that was doing some recycle calls, basically the same thing as an unfunded. This uh -huh. I was able to get a hold of a lady that was moved to Salt Lake, about 50 miles south of us, and was just asking her how, you know, where did where did we leave off with you um, with Myers Mortuary? Well, the crazy thing about that is, is her mother passed away about three or four years ago, 
And the lady says, you know, I'm, I'm amazed that you called me right now because my father's not doing too well. Well, so um, here at that mortuary, they have an ability to look online to see if they have a funeral plan. And the craziness thing is when you talk about that emergency contact, uh, they make sure that the person that's purchased that has been notified somebody because this lady that passed away four or five years ago had a funeral at a funeral plan at this mortuary up north, but they moved south and went to a different funeral home, had to pay out of pocket for that, didn't realize that there was a funeral plan in another mortuary for that. And so when, when this new agent called and said, hey, you know what, we have a funeral plan up here, you never cashed it, your mom has already passed away, she was truly grateful for that information. That's an extreme case of, of you know, taking care of someone's needs, but look at that. She would have probably done the same thing for her father and she was, distressed because she had no money to pay for her father's funeral. Now they had an X amount of dollars to take care of her husband or her dad. So that was a huge, huge testament of calling and making sure there's emergency contact names and make sure they notify their kids that they've done a plan. Absolutely. And you guys, the, probably the, the, the saddest thing, and that's a great example, but one of the things that will be probably more discouraged than anything is when you start to do this, the number of phone numbers that actually are disconnected. So, um, you know, people have bought their plans a long time ago. A lot of people have dropped their landlines that you don't have current information on them. And that's unfortunate because there's not current information. There's no way to contact these families. So it is a true service when you say, you know, we really like to update personal information about once a year. When was the last time you've had your personal information updated with us? Um, People actually genuinely appreciate this, that someone is calling them and reaching out. So the more you serve, the more you sell, right? So we're handling all of these service elements. Okay, let's update your contact information. Let's make sure your family doesn't have any surprises. And then you do try to sell, but it does not come before the service. And that's a really important element of a file update is that all we're trying to do right now is just make things easier on their family. And then we're gonna give them the option to then fully take care of their plan by adding these additional expenses. I've known, and Aaron, you could probably share your personal experience here. Um, in fact, why don't you just to share that from kind of what you did the first couple of years in the business, Aaron? Yeah, I, uh, I shared with a few people this morning, but when I started, I was not at a cemetery um, and I was at a very slow location as far as walk-ins or call-ins go. So, um, but we did have a lot of unfunded um, or past funded, partially funded files. Honestly, I didn't even look them up. I just called everyone. Um, I think we had so many leads in our database that probably they hadn't been contacted. And it was just such a general approach of, you know, this is Aaron with Larkin. We're just calling to check in. We do, periodically do file reviews. Is this a good time to make sure we have updated information? It's so unoffensive. Um, you know, at the very least, I learned a little bit more about the business because questions would come up and people would talk about services. But I bet, I mean, I did, I was fortunate to do very well my first year. I probably did a quarter of all my sales were adding on, you know, $2,000 at a time between merchandise and supplemental funds. And I didn't have the means to do it online. I mean, that right now, that's awesome because those people are already familiar with the funeral home. So you probably don't have to meet them in person to do a quick little add on. Um, and then I would also get referrals. I also wish we had Sepio Guard. We didn't have that at the time either, but. Um, it's a it's a great way for those of you that feel like you're kind of churning through the same leads and you'd like some new people to call. Um, just open up those files. I know some of you are at firms that have unfunded back to the 80s, so it's going to take a minute to work through them. But you've got the time. Just put aside a couple hours a day, um, you know, and make it a goal to reach out to 20 people every day from the unfunded. Uh, Sherry also commented on the chat bar that she uses Spokio to look up their phone numbers and that's a great point sherry if you get their name and city usually their cell phone numbers now are listed or you can do the white pages premium i think it's like three or four dollars a month um and that will show you people's cell phones so there's a few options that's a great suggestion sherry on that yeah yeah i agree definitely look look people up if they if their information is not accurate or you call a phone number and it's disconnected just take just take 30 seconds and look them up um, mm -hmm. and and uh, update their update their information but but they but people and not only but i actually think right now it, this is a wonderful time to do this it makes total sense to people 
and we're not able to meet with families in person right now so instead we're just going through and updating all of our files um it, you know it shows that you've got a funeral or cremation plan with us right now is that correct and you just kind of follow the script um you know when's the last time you've had your information updated you know i'm really sorry I, we should have called before now um you know is, is is now a good time or should i call back when you have 15 or 20 minutes to take care of this on the phone now when it gets back to the normal times you would simply say would would you like to come into the office to do this or can i come to your home that works great too but for now we're just trying to set a phone appointment right just to update their information so one other piece i just want to reiterate what you shared wes the phrase at the very least i use that all the time i i'm right. this phrase has probably made me more money than almost anything else because well i know we didn't have everything but i think it's good well that's okay at the very least we want to be totally transparent so there's no surprises we'll at least have it documented at the very least yeah. get together and make sure everything is on paper at the very least make sure we have updated information for you i mean it's not about the money you know what you may or may not want to fund the rest of it that's okay at the very least let's have a complete file for you and your family for the peace of mind for your kids but i use that yes. all the time very least it's, yep, that, that's that, that's a that's a great line so and then the other thing too that that just you know this with with your permission i'm going to go ahead and put a quote together for the items you're missing so your family doesn't have any surprises sound good i mean it's various it's very assumptive, but not just because with that line with your permission. But those are the little kind of lines in, in scripts at the very least with your permission that are they're they're uh, they're just kind of soft ways to say you're gonna do something for somebody um that's that's truly really going to help them. Okay. So can kind of attach on to some of those phrases because it will make your prospecting a lot easier when you kind of um add some of that lingo into what you're saying on the phone so so then um we're going a little bit over here so then it basically the call is very similar on an unfunded so that first one is kind of a funded arrangement that's missing items on the unfunded arrangement you're going to kind of basically do the same thing um get their updated information on the personal which is profile vital statistics form after the call today we're going to send you um a, a pd a fillable pdf version of the personal wishes profile vital statistics a fillable pdf of the cost estimate form so that you can actually do a cost estimate and send that to them um, with current prices which is important for unfunded arrangements because we want to send them current prices um, and then you also get and then you already have the fillable pdf of the um supplemental funds worksheet but we'll send that to you again as well so anyways as you're looking through unfunded you know i'm curious when you met with us back in in 2006 did 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 we go over uh, the options that you have to pay for this ahead of time to lock in the current prices so i'm just asking and this is what blew my mind a lot when i used to do this is that i would actually have people say to me you know we got this price quote but they really didn't talk much about us like like how to pay for this ahead of time and that was probably just someone who was just a really passive closer. They thought the family knew. They kind of didn't want to put any pressure on them. They gave them a price quote and probably asked a silly question like, well, what do you guys think? Or they didn't really know how to ask the question to get them to buy. And it's probably the family said, you know, well, let us take this and we'll think about it a little while and we'll get back to you. But we've had people actually explain to us on their first appointments that they actually didn't even go over monthly payment options because they were just uncomfortable. So they gave them a price quote and then kind of figured the family would just figure it out on, on, on their own. So when I asked that question, it was really surprising to me the number of people that said, you know, they really didn't go over how we could pay for this ahead of time to lock in prices. You we would assume that they did, but you'll be surprised the number of families that didn't understand their options that were available. So actually, but you know, unfortunately, since the last time you know, that you talked to somebody here at the funeral home, the prices have gone up. And again, I don't want your family to have any surprises. So with your permission, I'm gonna to put together a current price quote and I'll put together the monthly payment options. Um, and again, we can take care of all of this over the phone and online. What email address should I use to, to send you the information? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the information put together. I'll email it to you. When should I call back to go over the details? So at that point, we're gonna take their old unfunded file. We're gonna create a new cost estimate. Um, we're going to get all this information together and then we're going to send that out to them and schedule a time to, to, to call back and to go over it with them in detail. I think it would be a little bit um, 
difficult to probably try to do that right there with them on the phone. This is probably one that's going to take a couple of steps because we have their old unfunded arrangement and we're going to put a new cost estimate together for them, send that out to them and then review that with them together when they when they get that information. So um, again, what are we doing here? You know, I'm curious when you met met with us back in 2006, did we go over all the options that you have to pay for this ahead of time? So that you can lock in current prices a lot of times you'll be surprised you know i you probably did but i don't remember how that works you know that's totally fine but you know since the last time we talked the prices have gone up just a little bit and and i and i don't want you you to have any surprises whatsoever so with your permission i'm just going to go ahead and put together a current price quote and monthly payment options and then we can take care of all this over the phone or online what email address should i use to send you the information so um, I'm going to say we can take care of this all over the phone or, or online. It's just kind of planting that little seed that that's my ultimate goal. But again, we obviously have to email them the information first. So we're going to send the information out, put a current price quote together, um, use the fillable PDF to do that. You can save it. It looks nice. It's all typed up. You're going to send that out, out, out to them and then schedule a time to call back and to go over the details. Okay. The last piece of what I'll finish up with here is um the personal wishes organizer piece this is another thing you can add to it so if it's been a while if you know for sure that they weren't given a personal wishes organizer this is another way to add value to that conversation i didn't want to make this too wordy in the scripting so i'm just giving you another option here that you can plant this in your conversation but we now offer a free planning guide that's called the personal wishes organizer and what the guide does it kind of carefully walks you through making all of these decisions that need to be made and I can go over this with you online, and then I'd be happy to send you a digital or hard copy of the book. Is now a good time, or should we schedule time in the next few days when you have 15 or 20 minutes? So this is just another piece that you can add to that conversation if you want to. Um, I would highly advise it, um, but I didn't want to make that initial call too, too, too complicated in the first script. So this is kind of maybe call this a way to enhance or maybe phase phase two of the program. But I would just start by, by making these calls and just explain exploring the idea and you know pulling some files Armand suggested a great idea of just you know trying to do 10 a day or whatever I can almost guarantee in fact I will guarantee if you could do 10 15 20 of, of these a day and make those phone calls I would be willing to bet that probably one in 10 one in 15 will want to get the things that are missing in their plan and a lot of them don't even know that this stuff is missing. So you're providing a wonderful service by doing this and by reaching out to these families and by updating, first of all, their contact information and their vital statistics, and then making sure that they're aware of the other expenses so there aren't any surprises. You're providing a great service by doing this. So don't be afraid to bring it up. Don't be afraid to talk about it. Um, and then ask the question, the closing question. You can either take care of this in a single payment or make monthly payments which would work better for you um you're trying to again you know have that passion behind what you do what are you trying to do you're trying to prevent that family from having to pay for these expenses at a difficult time you're not doing anything wrong by asking them if they want to take care of this and doing it in a professional way so um that professional courage is extremely important and if you believe in what you do and don't want families to have to have any surprises then you shouldn't have to feel bad about making these calls and talking with people about the things that are left undone. I will say though on occasion, you're gonna get somebody that's a little bit frustrated by the fact that somebody didn't explain this to them ahead of time. And I will remind you as an agent and as a counselor to not, to not avoid having the conversation on supplemental funds. I can't tell you the number of people that will sell a funeral plan and never even talk about supplemental funds, never talk about third party items. And that's a major disservice to a family if you're doing that. So the one thing you'll discover in making these calls is you'll say, you know what, I'm never not going to cover that because there's some families who that was not discussed with them and it is a surprise and they're kind of frustrated by the fact that their counselor did not talk about third party expenses. So please, if you're not doing that, do it. Um, because we don't like these surprises, but now you have an opportunity to rectify that situation with the families that you serve. Any questions about this this program or process, or any comments? 
West, I just want to add that, um, man, I, I don't think the, the personal wishes organizer could be understated as a useful tool in this, especially with pre-funded uh, plans when you're making those calls and speaking to people who've already funded a portion or, or their plan. Um, I, I always phrased this part as a question. Have you filled out the personal wishes organizer that we gave you when you funded your plan? Nine times out of 10, they would say, no, I haven't made the time to do that or I've lost it. And, you know, especially when we're, again, when we're meeting in person, I got, I garnered so many appointments by just offering, hey, I have an updated version of it. I'd love to bring it out to you and go over it with you. And then, you know, selling travel protections after that and supplemental funds just kind of, it lended itself to it. Cause I'd have a copy of what was already done could talk to him about that and say, this is what you're missing. Here's the book. You know, if they had happened to have filled it out, I'd be like, I'd love to come over, come over and get a copy of what you filled out and add it to your file. Um, just so, you know, we have that on paper and, you know, then you can talk about securing the flowers and all of those simple funds as well if they hadn't already done that. So I, 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 a, I would, I would completely agree. And and for the in-home and office of, of appointments, that, that that's a 100% necessity. Um, and I would offer online as well. You guys have that little short digital version that you can show. Um, you have the fillable PDF that you can go over with them as well. So absolutely. Um, that's it's it's not something that most of these families ever had or put, uh, proposing that as a question have you filled out your personal wishes organizer that's a wonderful way to start that conversation they'll say what's a personal wishes organizer great point you know, it, 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 right so so um so i'll add that question here as well because that's an excellent point and a great way to bring up the conversation and that's what i was saying we're just assuming they have one but then they'll say, we never got one, right? Well, we need to make sure that you get one then. I'm so sorry that you didn't get it when you made your arrangements, um, but I'll make sure that you have your own copy, right? So so you're adding again value to to that conversation. West, Great point, Mike, thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Aaron. Uh, Aaron Feathers is asking if you're creating a new policy. Do you wanna explain that? Creating a new policy for? Creating a new, so you're doing an add-on, you're adding supplemental funds, someone wrote a policy. Oh. You can do it both both ways, Aaron, um, and everybody. Uh, you can, if they have an existing policy that's paid up and they want to add a single premium policy to that, you can actually just, um, without having to uh, re-ask health questions and things like that, you can actually do a policy change form and, um, uh, and, and, a, and another goods and services and actually add to an existing policy. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is just is is just to write up another policy. You could do it both ways. If they're going to make monthly payments, you're going to have to write up a new policy. If they're going to do a single payment, then you will add. You could add it to an existing policy. You can't add a monthly policy to an existing policy. That's probably the best way to put it. Any other chat Any other questions from anyone? Or voice questions are fine too. Hear your voice. <laughs> just to meet yourself. But hey, guys, I, I, I just challenge you to give this a try. Um, pull pull a few files. Um, again, you don't. I mean, there, there's a lot of discouragement with the fact that it's hard to get a new a new family to sit down and talk about new pre arrangements. They're going to find that this is going to be a lot easier. And making a handful of two or three thousand dollar sales is better than not making any at all right now. Um, in your attempt to try to get new families to sit down and have a full conversation about a, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollar funeral plan, this is going to be a lot easier for you. And if you do enough of these calls, as Aaron kind of shared, you know, a quarter of her business coming from those two to three thousand dollar add-on policies that she did on a pretty regular and consistent basis, and a lot of agents actually do do this as part of their normal prospecting, where they do. They'll do their new stuff, but they also call on old stuff. It's just kind of part of their lead source. So this is just a lead source that could easily account for 20 or 25% of your business if you're going back through and having the conversations. The other thing that comes as a as a beautiful gift with this are the referrals that we I haven't even played up that that much, but it's a really you can enhance this. And I didn't want to get make it too complicated, but sometimes I would offer to, you know. When I find out they have five children, you know, do, do your children know the arrangements you have on file? No, they don't know. You know, would it be okay if I could be, I'd be more than happy to actually deliver them a copy of your funeral plan so that they know who to call and what to do when you pass away? Can I do that for you? 
And there's all kinds of ways you can kind of enhance this to get referrals and to add value to it. But start here um, and then we can continue to add on to it. But working files can actually be, uh, if you did it and you did it well, it could be actually your only lead source and you could be very successful with it. If you're doing add-ons and getting referrals from existing policy owners who, by the way, believe in pre-planning, that's why they have a policy at the funeral home. <laughs> So they're easy to talk to about this because they've already done it. They believe in it. They're grateful that they did it. Um, it's a very easy conversation to have. So I challenge you to give this a try here over the next week and then give us some feedback on how it went. Wes, one other question in the chat from Aaron again. So he's saying it's it's loud there. I'm assuming it either at home or at the funeral home. So he's wondering if anyone is texting for call me, I'll call. Um, I, I don't know of a lot of people who are making the first initial contact because that's really our only cold lead source technically um does anyone want to chime in on that is anyone texting call mail call leads you can shake your head or nod your head or <laughs> i'm getting not that i'm aware of at this point um I, my thought on that just initially this is just my you know i, I feel like We've kind of done ringless voicemails to some colder groups or, you know, uh, Diana had that experience with the church group. I think right now your best lead source are, are going to be people who've had experience with Gerard and Ellie's or with your funeral home. So probably where you have so many unfunded, I think I would go that direction before I'd go call mail call right now. Now, that being said, I think the call mail call phone calls can be good, but we sort of want to tweak it a little bit like we have before. Normally, my role here would be calling to do a short survey, but honestly, I'm just checking in with our community to see how you're doing right now. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that, how it would be received on text. I think I'd try to maybe find people that have had contact with the funeral home first. Does anyone else have any thoughts on that? That, that would be my thought too. And we can have another conversation about this, Aaron, um, and, and don't want to get too off track here, but uh, if, if, if I were probably going to do a, a texting type call mail call campaign, um, I would actually send them a link to a, and just ask them to, 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 to complete a brief community survey to, to, to determine how we can better serve families in, in our community and actually create like a survey monkey or a or Google, Google survey or something they can actually complete from their phone um because there's enough questions there that would make more sense to create a link and send a link to them um and you send out enough of those and maybe you'd get a response um of people that are willing to do that if you, if you get the wording right so um I'll, I'll explore that as an option but that's the way i would handle that is just simply text them and ask them kindly to come this is aaron with broader and funeral home and we're we've we're putting together a, we put together a community survey uh, to help how we can figure out to serve families better in our community but please click this link and complete the short survey um right and, and we actually send them to actually to, to an actual survey link where they provide us their information that would be the way that i would go about that if if, if i were going to text it but we'll have to explore that a little bit further yeah we'll get back to you. that's great though about your aftercare text it sounds like that's working very well so hopefully i think everyone saw that on WhatsApp. Yeah. Um, yeah one thing on, on the file updates to you guys to, to uh, add text to that um if you think you have a cell phone number or you could even just try texting them but if you try to call them and you can't get a hold of them you could easily text them and just say um this is west with lark and mortuary we are we're we're currently updating your file at the funeral home would you please call me back at and give them your phone number like that's a great way to prospect so you can you can if you can't get a hold of them or they're not answering their phone try texting them and see if they'll call you back to do the file update so great idea yeah i, I would just i would try, try as many things as you possibly can so anyways you guys uh we've gone plenty long today i apologize for the long call hopefully it